Um, so I'm just going to plug in one piece here, and we'll come back to some more of it later as well. Scaling is such a, as I've tried to present, you know, such an absolutely gigantic piece of thinking about large systems uh, you know, where, they, where there is variation of scale and there is potentially this sort of um, <coughs> similarity across scales if you do the right thing. Uh, that's not to say everything is like that, but it's a, it is a huge, huge part of systems. So this is Moore's Law, so extremely famous, and I'm just going to give you this really nice connection that's been made between a number of pieces. Um, and I think the initial paper was like doubling every two years maybe, and then it was reframed by Moore, who's still around and, and funds data science initi initiatives, uh, to a every 18 months. It's done in different ways. So this is uh, counts, right? This is... Um, <coughs> A count thing. So this is a, a that's where we get our doubling. So transistor count doubling every two years per unit area sort of idea it can be reframed in different ways. So that's Moore's law, very very famous thing. And let me add one piece for Moore's law, which is here. So this is go away. This is a, a wide uh, article from a few years ago. It's 2013. Um, <laughs> See, it's hard to read this. It says 4, 17, 13. Fine. You should always put year, four, four numbers, then the month, then the day. Everyone can get that. So, right, an interesting thing is that it, it was just an observation, then it became a self fulfilling prophecy of sorts, right? It was like, we have to make it happen, and people invented all sorts of things that weren't in the same category as what came before. And uh, so this goes on and on. But, so I guess it's mostly writing. But the point about this is that the Pixar maniacs wanted to make these films, and it's maybe, there you go, late 70s, when they started talking, someone started thinking about it, part of this, what would become the team, and they used Moore's Law to figure out when they'd be able to do what they wanted to do. And they were, you know, and it, it was good. It was like 15, uh, 20, you know, 20, it's gonna take 20 years ago to, to take, right? We got close to making it in the mid 80s, but they knew essentially from Moore's Law that this would not be possible. And they held on to it and, you know, it became an incredible uh, success. So that's a really uh, kind of interesting, you know, from a social, technological kind of uh, viewpoint, that's a pretty interesting um, projection into the future that worked really well. Very famous paper um, <coughs> that's connected to this. This is, uh, uh, gives rise to this rights law. It's called rights law. And it's about the, I mean, this is really, wow, this is kind of an amazing thing. So this is, right, the this is a long time ago, right? So the, it's the 1930s when it was published. The present writer, you know, this sort of stuff. We're very much into the active now. Is that what you, like we? It's like we did this, you know, like we're owning it and so on, instead of this kind of you know people in white suits thing. Um, the present writer, right? So it's been working on this since 1922. And one of the things uh, this, this guy was interested in was production, right? Uh, and so this was looking at how long it would take to make a plane by some group. Um, I don't know what the corporation was. So there are a mixture of things in here. This is the cost of the last machine of a series, right? So the cost is going down because you're getting better at making it. You're a bit getting better at sourcing things. You're maybe not having to make every special part. First of all, you're trying to make something that, in this case, flies and doesn't fall out of the sky. So there's a lot of, like, you know, just invention going on here. And then you become better and better at it. Uh, this is the labor production cost. This is different things being shown here, but this idea that they're, they're also going down. So looking at a whole bunch of pieces here, uh, and I'll, I have a framing for rights law properly, but this is, I, I think I showed this a so number in series, one, two, three, four, it's just, you know, lined up in, this is a rank ordered thing. I did, I did mention this in scaling. There's uh, related work for this, or inspired by this, was uh, looking at the, um, the, the time between terrorist attacks, right? And it was the same thing. You have terrorists who are getting better at um, you know, inventing whatever it is. In that case, it was IEDs, right? So um, improvised explosive devices. And it tracks in the same way. And you can look at how that's traveling to see if, you know, if you're on the blue team versus red team, like where, where things are going. So this is to put these pieces together. Wright's Law, um, Moore's Law, I'm sure you've heard of. Wright's Law, maybe not, but they are famous things. So this is about learning and making and production and invention. And you know, even with Moore's Law, you could talk about this space that was going to be um, accessed eventually, but not know the technology, right? Not know the, it's not just like, we will make smaller versions of the thing we have. We'll actually discover new 
um, you know, ways of, of creating transistors. So let's put things together here. This is a paper from a few years ago. Nagy, who was at Santa Fe Institute, I think at MIT now. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the unit cost for the stuff, right? So YT. So this is something that we think is going down. This is how much is being made. So Wright's law can be expressed in this way, that the amount of stuff being made is actually proportional. Time is in here, but it's more stuff you make, um, uh, the, the, the cost is going down, and you're making more stuff. It's an inverse power law here, right? So more and more widgets you're producing, and, and the per unit cost is going down. So that sort of makes sense in general, but actually, you know, to see that it has some scaling is, is an extra layer here, right? You know, you double the number you produce. And in, ha in achieving that, you've had to, you know, do some clever things to make it possible and so on. And you just didn't, you didn't, it's not just, there is a return to that. So then Moore's law can be um, framed in different ways. And one is that the amount of stuff decreases exponentially, sorry, the uh, cost goes down exponentially with time. So now time is um, ex explicit there. And there's a connecting one. So this is sometimes called Sahal's law. But it connects both of them. And it's that the, uh, <coughs> the, the volume of stuff is also going up exponentially, right? So these, there's an exponential aspect here. And you can see how we can combine these two pieces to, together to get this inverse power law. So of course, this is for things that are taking off that people you know, are using. So we, if we put those together, we have the connection between these various um, factors. And so this uh, Nagy paper has a number of, what is it, about 60, I think 60 products. And I mean, they're quite different. This is memory, DRAM, this is PVC, um, and magnesium, right? This is completely different sorts of things. We're making this, you know, getting this out of the earth. This is another thing we're making. Um, and they all, you know, these are rough. These are very squished little graphs. But uh, this is the price going down. This is an exponential graph here, right? So linear on this scale, this is exponential logarithmic scale, so this looks linear on this. This is the amount um, being shipped, right? So that has this kind of exponential growth. Obviously, it's going to be somewhat rough. Uh, PVC, similar thing, similar thing, similar thing. So that, that's much rougher up there. You could imagine this is from you know, discovery of different places. I don't know the details of magnesium. Maybe we have a magnesium champion here who can tell us about it. But um, so very different places. And then you can start to put them all together. And this is you know, you're getting these different measures out. <clears throat> this is from Sahal's law, and then these are, these are coming from, um, <clears throat> well, maybe I've got that wrong, but right, Wright's law and so on. Uh, the right parameter is this one. Yep. Right. And then this is Sahal and Moore's law put together. Uh, but they, they, this idea that they, you know, they, they match up quite well, right? So um, a slightly different thing. So these are chemical pieces up here, maybe. Hardware, so this is things like Moore's law and energy and other. Uh, anyway, so that's you know if a, if a whole sector seems to be developing well, there's a, so the, all of this is to say that Moore's law is kind of everywhere, right? It's all over the place. You might want to think about it in social phenomena, just as I mentioned for terrorists. But you can think about organizations. I don't know what it means for people using Snapchat or something. Do they get faster? <laughs> um, <clears throat> But you can think, I'm sure you can think of it yourself, stuff that you've mastered over time. The first time you've done something, it was really a struggle, and then you get better at it, and you get better at it, and you get better at it, right? And there was this exponential or scaling sorts of structures in there. So Moore's law is everywhere, and then also this Wright's law, which is this, this shrinking of time between doing, think, producing something. You get better at making it, it gets faster and faster. Yep. So that's... Uh, a package that I want to put in there. I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, now I guess we're getting maybe to the end of Moore's law. We, we like to say that over and over, but there is a there is a point, right? Things get too small eventually, and we understand this quantum business. So um, I guess we we've, we've kind of gotten around with that a little bit by just putting computers everywhere now. So we've we seem to be happy about it. All right, good. <laughs>